If you love to cook and eat, but don't love blowing your entire budget every time you shop for food, you gotta keep watching. I'm Kara, I'm a registered dietitian, and welcome to my channel if you're new here. This is my top 10 list of pantry essentials that can help you put together delicious meals that maximize flavor and convenience without spending more than you have to. All right, the first one is cooking oil. And I know some of us are kind of still recovering from that whole no fat, low fat phase of diet culture, but trust me, having some fat in your meals is a good thing. It helps with the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. It might make some cooking methods a little less messy. And to be honest, it just tastes good, right? Because fat can carry both that mouthfeel and texture and add a lot of richness to your recipes. And I like to feel as fancy as the next person and see all those pretty bottles lined up on my pantry shelf. But if I had to narrow it down to just a couple of essentials, it would be these. A nice tasting olive oil, a neutral cooking oil, and maybe a toasted sesame oil if you're like me and enjoy cooking a lot of Asian inspired dishes. This is my personal favorite, but I'll link to a couple other options in the description box below. If you can stock up on these, they will be true workhorses in your kitchen, letting you make anything from stir fries to grilled stuff to baking, even your own salad dressings. All right, number two is canned beans, lentils, and split peas. So this entire category of pulses includes some other legumes like chickpeas and even peanuts. But when it comes to convenient, quick cooking options that are also really affordable, you just cannot beat canned beans. And absolutely nothing against dried beans because they can be even less expensive for serving. But personally, I need that convenience of being able to just open it up with a can opener, drain it, give it a rinse and start cooking. If you're worried about sodium, I've got a video about how to make a low sodium diet taste better and what to look for on labels. But don't forget about split peas and lentils. They're also a really affordable and versatile source of plant-based protein and fiber, and some varieties can cook in as little as 15 minutes. So you can see what I mean in this recipe for a split pea salad. All right, moving on to my third pantry essential, it is pasta. It is amazing what you can do with just a box of noodles. Once you add a protein, a sauce, maybe a vegetable, you have a complete meal in one plate or bowl. Lately, I've been looking for whatever's on sale and getting a shape I like, but I also really like this Barilla Protein Plus line. But I gotta be honest, my fourth pick is my personal favorite for carbs in a meal, and that is rice. Specifically, I love this brand of California-grown medium grain white rice. And we eat so much of it, I buy it 15 pounds at a time. It's actually pretty economical because I think per ounce that ends up being like 11 cents or, you know, just something ridiculously low. Either way, it is really cheap, it's really good. It cooks perfectly in my rice cooker every time with like literally zero effort from me. But just for variety, I also will usually keep a couple of these in my pantry too. And just like with the pasta, you're adding a protein, maybe a vegetable, and you have a nice all-in-one meal. And to go along with this, I'll also usually recommend having some kind of low sodium broth or stock in your pantry. And this is completely down to personal preference because you definitely don't need them, right? Like water will also get the job done. But this goes way beyond just cooking a starch or a grain because you can also use this for soups or stews you know, crock pot recipes, instant pot recipes, braising recipes, and sometimes even making like a pan sauce or a marinade. If I'm feeling like really ambitious, I'll sometimes make my own from veggie scraps or like if we had a rotisserie chicken that week. But honestly, for the time and convenience, a couple of bucks for a carton of stock is a pretty good deal. And now we're going to move on to some pantry friendly produce options. First up is onions and garlic. Oh, and I didn't even realize we're like kind of, you know, color coordinating. I have literally so many onions at any given point in time. I cook with them almost daily. And as you can see, like every variety and in that bowl back there, I have even more. I think onions are so underrated. I think they get no love. And I think it has to do with that diet culture myth that white foods have no nutritional value. And I have to disagree with that. So onions are part of the allium family, which also includes leeks and shallots and chives and garlic. They offer up some important nutrients and have been linked to positive benefits for things like heart health and gut health thanks to the prebiotic fiber. And they have a ton of great flavor, which I think can help get us excited to eat other nourishing foods. My only word of caution here is that they are a high FODMAP food. So if you know those are foods that cause some GI issues for you, it's probably best to use them a lot more sparingly than I do. And we're sticking with produce for my next pick for pantry essentials, and that is potatoes. And yes, that does include white potatoes, along with sweet potatoes, baby potatoes, red potatoes, literally any variety you like. And you've probably heard at some point, right, like stay away from potatoes, but I don't really see a reason to. They deliver some really great vitamin C, a little bit of plant-based protein, some fiber, especially if you eat the skin. 
on top of the fact that they're really cheap and can last a long time. So I have a few variations of baked sweet potatoes, but I also really like to use them in skillet hashes. You've got your standard baked potato options, adding them to soups and stews or roasting them like on the stovetop or in an air fryer. So you might notice we're more than halfway through the list and most of what we've talked about has been geared more towards dinner, maybe leftovers for lunch. And you might be thinking, well, what about breakfast? And as a dietitian, I'm here to tell you that breakfast is a social construct. You can eat whatever you want for that first meal of the day. But if you're looking for an option that's really versatile and affordable and hits all the things we've been talking about on this list, it would be oats. This could be rolled oats or instant oats or steel cut oats or even like the flavored packets or protein oats. Actually, another dietitian did a really good review of protein oats, so I'll link to that in the description box. But all of these options come from the same grain. They're just processed a little bit differently or cut into a slightly different shape. So nutritionally, they're quite similar until those other things get added. If I had to pick just one as an all-around versatile option, it would be rolled oats. I can bake with these. I can blitz it into an oat flour to use as a thickener or in place of breadcrumbs and not have to contend with that longer cooking time that you might get with steel cut oats. But while we're here, I can't help but slip in a bonus pick for breakfast, which is cereal. It can be another really nourishing, really affordable option. Okay, moving on to number nine, which is a protein packed option, but I'm talking about canned tuna or salmon. Now, tin fish and canned seafood is having like a bit of a moment right now, and I'm really here for it because just like with fruits and vegetables, most Americans aren't actually eating the recommended number of servings of seafood every week, which is just two. And I think that comes down to a couple of things, but mostly cost and convenience. And one option that I am obsessed with is this EVOO line from Starkist, especially the salmon. I mean, you can just tear this right open and eat it like a push pop. It's got just the right ratio of oil and salt. I think it tastes so good just straight out of the pouch, but you can also add it to a salad, you know, sandwiches, wraps, you know, stick it in an omelet, you know, do whatever, but basically anything that could use a little boost of protein and some of those heart healthy fats. And before we get to my last pantry essential, let's do a few honorable mentions. And that's mostly because I just don't personally use them as often as other things on this list, but they could rank a lot higher on yours. So honorable mention number one is bread. I really like sourdough or a super whole grain option like power seed. Honorable mention number two is canned soup. And for me, there's usually not enough veggies or protein. So I'll doctor them up by adding, you know, a little something else, maybe frozen veggies or extra beans. You know, you get the idea. And honorable mention number three is ramen noodles, because this is like the ultimate comfort food. I think it's perfect on its own, but you can also bolt this up by adding a protein or veggies edamame, you know, anything you want to make it a meal. This is also where I'm going to do my obligatory self-promotion and ask you to hit that subscribe button and like this video if you do indeed like this video and find it helpful. I hope you do. Okay, finally, here's my last pick for the top 10 pantry essentials, and that is pre-made sauces and condiments. And I know you might be thinking, well, that's just way too processed. Why is she recommending that? And it's because everything and we have got to find ways to make home cooked food taste good enough that we actually want to cook and eat it. But these pre-made sauces can be a lifesaver when you're short on time. Like if you happen to have time to make a sauce from scratch, that is great. Go ahead and do that. But if you're in a jam, sometimes you just need something that's quick and easy to avoid, you know, eating out or doing takeout or worst of all, like not eating anything at all. A couple of quick shout outs to Omsum, which is a woman owned, Asian owned brand. They're also very pro MSG, which I love. These are sauce starters that come from different East Asian and Southeast Asian cuisines. So delicious and so easy to add to a stir fry. And also Rouse. This is my partner's favorite. And to me, it's honestly kind of a splurge because you can definitely find less expensive sauces in that same area of the grocery store. But he really likes the flavor. I don't have to doctor it up to get it to taste the way I want. And this jar is big enough. We can make multiple meals out of a single purchase. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 picks for essential pantry ingredients. And of course, this doesn't represent everything we're buying or keeping in the pantry, but I buy them consistently enough that I just sort of rely on muscle memory whenever I'm shopping. And I don't think I've said it yet, so I'll say it here, but this is just my list. Like this is just a reflection of the way that we cook and eat at home. And that could look really different from the way you're doing things. So as you start to make your own list, I really want to encourage you to think about your individual needs and preferences. They might look really different than mine. I would also really recommend fighting the urge to label any of this as junk or ultra processed foods, because 
yeah, I mean, some of this is going to meet the criteria for an ultra processed food according to some classification systems, but that doesn't mean you need to avoid it. In my opinion, that's just not the most helpful way to think about food because it's pretty judgmental, right? Like it lines up with diet culture, but there's also a huge spectrum of processing. Processing can make food less expensive or more shelf stable or more convenient and faster to prepare. And in some cases, like with enrichment and fortification, it's even adding nutrition. So I'll just leave you with this gentle reminder that there is no right or wrong way to take care of yourself when you're aiming to eat enough for your body. Your pantry does not need to look like these picture perfect restocks that you might see on social media. It could be a mess of different boxes and packages and bags of processed food, and you can still make great tasting and nourishing meals at home. So if you're still watching, leave me a comment and let me know what you consider a pantry essential. If your list looks different than mine, or if you think I missed something, let me know in a comment. I'll also be doing a part two with pantry essentials for snacks instead of meals. So if you wanna check that out, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a new video. As always, thank you so much for watching and cheers to more fearlessly nourishing meals.